guys are excited to be here tonight. Make some noise. We're going to continue to praise our God. Sing nice church.
sing this together, our Father. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom. Your kingdom. Come quickly. Come quickly. Your will. Your will be done the same. it's so good to be back in the house of the Lord worshiping you with our family how many guys miss that time of worship together right you guys are excited to be back hey well I was just uh, thinking the past few months few weeks few days about everything that's going on in our in our world in our country and uh, 
And I found myself telling myself, man, the change has to start with me. It's got to start with me. I got to change before I can see change in the world. And oftentimes when we think like that, we always forget to put God into that mix. And so my prayer tonight, and my prayer for all of us here is, God, would your will be done, not only in our lives, but in the lives around us, in our country, in our world, God. God, would your kingdom come into this place? God, will we never take you out of the mix of things? In fact, God, would you be the main ingredient in everything that we do? So Jesus, would your will be done, your kingdom come. Lead us, guide us into this next season that we're going into. We love you so much. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Hey, what's up, New Hope Community Church, youth and young adults? Well, I'm here in my home today, and I thought, why not do it from my desk? So I'm bringing another message about redemption, and we're continuing our series this summer about redemption songs, and we're going to be pulling this out from Genesis, all right? Genesis 22, so if you got your Bibles, go ahead and grab that, bring it out, and get it in front of you or bring it up on your computer or iPad or phone. Um, and it, let's just dive right in. And Genesis 22 basically is about a story about a father and a son. And it's so awesome. We know we just came off of Father's Day um, yesterday. And so I'm just so uh, excited to share this message on the father's heart, basically. On on God the Father and even Abraham as a father and what it took to be um, a son of God and then to be a father of Isaac and and God asked a tough thing of Abraham now Abraham and his wife um, really wanted a son they wanted a family and it took a long time and finally they were blessed with a son and with that blessing you see god then ask abraham if he's willing to do something something that he so longed after would he be willing to give it up if god asked him and so let's read genesis 22 1 let's read that together it says after after these things god tested abraham and said to him abraham and abraham said here i am God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him as a burnt offering on one of those mountains of which I shall tell you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you just for making another um, amazing sunny day here in Hawaii and um, for summertime. 
May you just bless the rest of our time together online and bless our time here just together in general. Uh, may you uh, get us excited for what is to come in this youth ministry and may you do mighty work in not just the ministry itself, but us as individuals, um, growing us to be uh, amazing followers and people who um, go after you and go after the loss in your name to bring uh, people to you so that you'd save each and every person on this world so no one will have to face um, condemnation but all find redemption. Uh, we love you, Lord. Pray in your name. Amen. Hey, we all have had to make tough choices, right? We've, we've all had to choose whether, am I going to get the PlayStation or am I going to get an Xbox? Am I going to go... Forget console, I'm going to go to PC, or how about even something tougher, right? Are we going to choose Taco Bell tonight or Jack in a Box? You know, and do we watch YouTube or do we watch Disney Plus? It's, it's, we don't know. But uh, seriously, tough choices, um, uh, like these fun ones, or there are real tough ones like responsibility. Uh, do we go to the beach? Or do we get our chores done and then go to the beach? You know what I mean? Like, do we clean our room or do we go shopping for more clothes and don't clean up the clothes we already have? Or do we read our Bibles or do we sleep in? So many choices are to be made in uh, a young life for you junior highers and high schoolers. But um, the tough choices really show your character. It really shows your heart really if you the ability to make tough choices really shows where your heart lies and and if your heart lies on not taking care of the things that matter then um really it that's what is within you i mean it doesn't really matter if i do my choice chores or I have listen to my parents or if i you know if, if even if, if i do the things that i need to do as a young person if i don't do these things then it really reveals my heart and and especially when it comes to things that are fun or the things that we're responsible for right and so Abraham here is really comes down to a tough choice it, it may not be uh, clean my house or go to the beach it's more life and death right it's um, it's more I wanted a son and I have a son versus I have a son now and God's asking me to sacrifice him. And and I think in that moment, right, just reading it, you can kind of, your heart breaks for Abraham in a sense. I, I don't know what I would choose. I would hope I would rise to the occasion like Abraham did. And this is why he is known as the father of the faith because he believed, he chose obedience he chose to have a heart of obedience. He's saying, I am going to choose you, God, over my son, Isaac, who which I hold in love. And you, you read it. It says, um, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. He said, you love him, but I need to know, do you love me more? And so Abraham's obedience showed this love and 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 obedience this kind of obedience is the depth of your love for god it is shown in obedience it is in the moments where god is asking the tough things of us are we willing to show our love to him and so abraham puts his face faith fully in god in that moment right he finds redemption because in that um comes away there's a, a way of redeeming um, which God is saying well Abraham you say you love me but it really looks like you love your son more so I'm going to test you and so that's where we're going to get point one it says God redeems the faithful God redeems the faithful let's read in Genesis 22 9 3 11 where it says when they came to the place of which God had told him Abraham built the altar there he laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son but an angel of the Lord called to him from heavens and said Abraham Abraham and he said I am here man through love and obedience, Abraham 
is trusting God. He said, hey, God, you told me to do this, and I am going to do this. All right? Now, this is his son there. He he is, his son is there. This is a very awkward and, and crazy moment because they together walk the wood up the mountain. They together gather this wood. They together, you know, have this knife and... You know, Isaac is like, man, my dad has a knife. He's got some wood. Okay, we're going to be building an altar. All right, we're building an altar. But I don't see what we're sacrificing. And then for the, for the father, as Abraham, he's like, okay, I'm gathering wood with my sacrifice. I'm carrying the knife. He sees it as the sacrifice. And oh, oh my gosh, my sacrifice is my son. It's awkward. It's not comfortable. There's no comfortability in what God is asking here. And I, I was thinking about it, like, sometimes I think one of the most awkward times, right, that we don't want to face is when we have to apologize for something. When we have to say, and look at someone else and say, I am sorry. I'm sorry I did this. I did not mean to. And take responsibility. Because it's awkward. And these words are coming out. But here's the thing. When we apologize, there's redemption. We are found forgiveness. There is a interaction between people where awkwardness and weirdness, but restitution and reconciliation and redemption can be found. And it's, and it's important in that moment. And what ha is happening here, there's an awkward moment where Abraham is truly having to do something really tough Yet he's willing to go through it because he believes in what God has asked of him. He believes that God only has the best of him, for him. God only loves him and that he only loves God. So why truly would God do this? He does not fully understand, but he is trusting in him. This is where faith comes in. This is where belief comes in. And this is tough. And at the same time, hey, I believe what God says is true. So I know forgiveness is true. I know reconciliation is true. So I must be willing to go through the awkwardness of apologizing. He was willing to go through the awkwardness of putting the fire, I mean, the wood down, for laying his son down, for pulling his knife out. And in that moment, God saw his heart that Abraham truly loves me as God. And so I am going to stop him. God says, I am here. Isaac says, I am here with you, Lord. And, and it's crazy because God is also on the tail end of things saying, uh, a sacrifice must be made. And that's what we forget sometimes. A sacrifice does need to be made. At all times, for the goodness and greatness that God has in store for us, there might be a sacrifice that needs to be made. You know, when living at home, we might think, man, I love that we get to eat food. There's so much food in my refrigerator. I just go to my icebox and I grab any Hawaiian sun or I grab a, a frozen pizza or whatever it is and I get to eat and drink something. But there was something that was paid for it, right? Someone paid for it to be there. It just doesn't show up magically in our refrigerator. So it, a, a sacrifice must be paid. And, 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 and this is what he's represent, representing. He's saying, you have built an altar, but take your son off. And that's where point two is going to come where it says, a sacrifice must be made, so Jesus came. A sacrifice must be made, so Jesus came. How does that make sense when we're talking about Abraham and Isaac? Well, let's keep reading the story. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now, I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and behold, behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up as a burnt offering instead of his son. God says, no, don't hurt your son. I see you love me. I see the importance of who I am in your life. So take your son off. And boom, instantly provides a ram that was there. It might have been there the whole time, but he was so caught up in this, in this emotion and in the process of obedience 
They never noticed it, but he, the offering was still made. This is why uh, when we say Jesus came, the offering still needed to be made. The sacrifice still needed to be done because Adam and Eve made a mistake that we all have to pay. This is a debt that is ours and, it, and we continually have to pay it. But then Jesus stands in that place at the whole time. There was a plan like that ram to be behind him. There was Jesus standing behind us saying, when you want, if you declare me, if you decide to follow me, I will stand in your place. Like the ram stood in the place for Isaac. The offering still needs to be paid. The debt still needs to be paid. The sacrifice must be made. So I am here. And so he did that. And he did that. It wasn't me. It wasn't your parents. It wasn't you. It wasn't anyone else. It was God saying, I, God, am going to pay the debt you made in the first place. And that's so powerful. That that blows away anything that I could try to compare to. Honestly. That God's love is so great that even in our mistakes, he made a way by sacrificing himself and and that's why i think the tail end of this story were in genesis 22 14 and we can read it so abraham called the name of the place the lord will provide and it is and it is said today on the mount of the lord it shall be provided it was so significant that he took this mountain he said from now on this mountain is going to be known as the lord will provide because he knew the importance of that. Remembering that to find redemption, the Lord will provide it. Redemption is going to be found because the Lord has provided it. That when it's our fault, the Lord will provide. That when we are in a place of need, the Lord will provide. If we need saving, the Lord will provide. If you walk away with anything, walk away with the saying, that even a mountain shouts the name of the Lord will provide. I will not provide. I cannot. I have a limitation on what I can do and am funded with. Your parents will provide as much as they can because they are your parents and God has, you know, empowered them to do such. But even they have a limitation to what they can provide. In those moments, you will find out the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. The Lord will be the one that will give and share and love and nurture and comfort and live, behold and save and meet needs and feed. So this redemption song, I tell you, is all about the Lord will provide. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today. We love you so much. God, may we never lose sight of who actually provides for us that in our every day, whether up or down or just another day, you are providing everything we need, whether it be a word, whether it be a just a comforting uh, wind or sunshine or another person to come into our life. You are providing exactly what we need and that you've always done that. And whether it was providing a ram for Isaac or whether it was Jesus for all of mankind, you provide. And so in that, Lord, we thank you for your provision. We love you so much. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, have another amazing week. Hey, we're two weeks away from restarting our services live in the ministry center. So get excited. Tell your friends. Let's invite people July 5th, Sunday at 5 p.m. in the ministry center. Okay, and uh, let's gather together and make sure we're going to be wearing our mask. We're going to try to do our best as a youth ministry to uphold what we're supposed to uphold um, as we want to be safe. We want to make sure we're still having fun. And uh, so let's get there. Let's follow the rules. Let's get excited. Let's invite our family and friends. Let's be talking about it. And uh, I'll see you guys next week online. And we'll be talking about another story from the Bible.
another redemption song. All right, see ya. Cheers!